OK. Well, it's 10 o'clock. Um, so we'll make a start and uh, hopefully people will. Keep on joining us as we go along. So uh, first thing I'd like to do, of course, is to uh, welcome you to our EU Green Week webinar hosted by our Enlight EVS uh, cluster, which is a cluster of projects uh, funded by the H2020 research program. And they are all focused on one thing, even though they do several different things within that field. And that is, of course, to try to make our electric vehicles of the future to be lighter, more efficient and more practical. Um, by enlightening them, we make sure that a the battery can last longer, so we have an actual battery electric vehicle instead of a battery on wheels. And of course, we also try to make sure that we have uh, a lot of thought for whether these new concepts and ways of making things lighter are also sustainable. So I always say we don't just a lot of things that obviously seem to be sustainable and better for the environment, but we don't know until we really do the research and find out what it is that is possible or not. We are very grateful uh, for the EU in this case to uh, acknowledge us as one of the official side events for the Green Week, whose theme this year is, of course, uh, green skills. I think that this is a particularly important topic at the moment. Uh, there was a, a report from LinkedIn at the beginning of last year that noticed that there was a discrepancy in the growth of green skills demand and the growth of green skills supply. Uh, so I think that the EU is also uh, busy with this topic, trying to make sure that we have the skills and the know-how, the knowledge within the industry to make the changes that we think are important. This is also why most of our projects here today have been thinking about not just what it is that we have to do in the future, but also how do we make it possible for us to integrate that knowledge and that new technologies and concepts into the industry and make sure that they get actually used. So we have the great pleasure today to be uh, also joined by uh, Mr. Maurizio Maggiore. Um, he is a senior expert with the DG Research at the European Commission. And he has very graciously agreed to tell us a little bit about how he sees the and well, the, the, the light weighting uh, component of the research that we're doing in context, of course, uh, of the EU research in general. So Maurizio, can I please ask you to uh, say a few words to welcome everybody and introduce the topic? Thank you uh, very much uh, for inviting me uh, to this webinar. And uh, uh, welcome to all the participants uh, uh, which are uh, online. I, uh, let's say, I, I've been concerned with this topic uh, for a long time. This has been a subject of a long series of projects. I still remember uh, writing the topic that led to Superlight Car, which was the first large, large project uh, which delivered a complete uh, uh, vehicle structure and not just uh, a few components uh, like uh, happened in previous projects. This was framework six. And then we had uh, in following uh, frameworks, Alive and Light Alliance uh, and the projects which are in, uh, in today's event. However, I uh, still have problems uh, seeing uh, the implementation of all this series of projects. And I think this is an important uh, uh, objective uh, for all of you who are involved. Many of you have been in, the, in these previous projects uh, to really dig uh, uh, where those technologies were implemented. Because uh, we have uh, more and more pressure uh, about this. And uh, in this particular area, it's uh, difficult to, to justify that this is specific for electric vehicles. Uh, lightning is indeed uh, improved, uh, uh, needed to improve sustainability, but that's not achieved by reducing 10% of the weight of a hammer. So uh, industry, I think, uh, uh, should look uh, beyond making, uh, uh, using lighter materials or lighter structure, but really also looking at uh, uh, lighter concepts. So 
it's a combination of the two that works. Otherwise, uh, it's uh, it will be difficult. But in any case, as I say, it's important to show where the technology has been to justify in the future to keep uh, uh, these uh, type of projects uh, uh, for light waiting. And then I will explain why I'm underlining this uh, in the future. For it is uh, in, indeed it's less and less clear what uh, the uh, real uh, benefit of uh, only uh, working on the lightweight on the structure. I remember that uh, the alive proposal in the text explained that at the time, and we are talking about uh, a time when batteries were, were very costly, the lightweighting didn't pay off compared to the saving uh, in the battery size. So. And this, as I say, has been a long time. So making this kind of calculations again to understand uh, what is uh, feasible and worth uh, worth doing, uh, it's I think uh, an important task that you, as a as a kind as a group, uh, are very well placed uh, uh, to do. And uh, uh, the reality, in my view, is that all type of vehicle benefit, and in reality, is internal combustion engines. Uh, pr uh, propelled ones that have the biggest benefit. So it's there that we should see these technologies implemented. And as I say, I cannot see because I I have no um, feedback on the implementation of the of the projects. For EVs, the fact that the batteries are becoming denser and denser, I think, uh, makes this uh, uh, question is even more important. And uh, even there, I'm not seeing uh, uh, electric vehicles, uh, at least uh, in Europe, uh, because uh, we know that Tesla is doing a great job by totally changing the technology. Uh, but here in Europe, I, I don't see this application and these vehicles becoming lighter. So I think uh, the, the, let's say, those of you who are in industry uh, should really uh, be uh, outspoken and, and clarify uh, these things uh, to to us uh, uh, in the future. As an example of why I'm uh, particularly concerned, uh, I remember an old project, something like 20 years ago, the Apolis project, which did uh, a, a, a basically the main structure of a sports car completely in uh, carbon fiber. And already at the time, we were looking at LCAs. And the result was that uh, the, the cost of the fiber in terms of CO2 barely paid back in the life of the vehicle. And that was an internal combustion engine uh, vehicle. So I, I, I know that carbon fibers have improved, but I think it's important uh, in this case and in all cases to really see, as you said at the beginning the introduction, the global benefit in terms of life cycle assessment. Because as I say, on one end, uh, it looks like uh, it's less important than internal combustion engines. And on the other, if this means using sophisticated materials, I think we need hard evidence of uh, the uh, of the benefits that it can provide, if at all. Otherwise, it, it's uh, it's um, uh, interesting to look at uh, uh, other type of structure like Tesla is doing. And uh, uh, of course, as I mentioned carbon fiber, which is probably one of the worst examples in terms of uh, intensity of uh, carbon. But what about aluminum as well? Because uh, there, uh, I said Tesla is doing uh, this job, but they're using basically big chunks of aluminum. So I have, uh, I have uh, uh, questions and I would like to have answers uh, from the experts that are in, in, this, uh, in this workshop. So, just this is just to say that uh, we might be transitioning uh, and we actually doing it uh, from light weighting uh, to LCA driven projects. So light weighting per se might not be the holy grail. Uh, we have to look uh, at the LCA effects uh, of the materials and find which is the best compromise uh, uh, for the future. And uh, as I say, we are doing it. So we have uh, the recently started LCA project in which uh, a lot uh, of the people around the table are involved because of course they have to feed the data, the real data. We want only real data, no more databases or something like that. We want to know that car, how uh, is the LCA of that car and compare it with the other car 
manufacturer in China with the real data and not uh, just the. Um, and uh, at the same time, we will have this uh, circular curve, which is the other, uh, let's say, frontier of, uh, of uh, vehicle structures. So LCA, but also recycling and using uh, recycling materials and designing for facilitating the recycling and reuse of the components. So I think uh, uh, the the expertise which is present uh, is uh, what we need for answering these questions. Sorry for asking so many, but uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we, we we need to have, uh, let's say, a hard-nosed uh, approach to these things because, as I say, we get uh, uh, challenged by the Parliament, by the Council on, on, on uh, what to do in the future, how much money to put into uh, the research projects. And uh, uh, I think that this is, these are legitimate questions and uh, we need to provide answers uh, to, the, to all the stakeholders. And at the same time, make vehicles which are uh, closer and closer to real sustainability. You say that we don't know. I think uh, uh, we have uh, some doubts here and there, some I raised, and uh, uh, we, we really need to find out whether it's better, which I think personally is true, a heavier EV than a heavy internal combustion engine by several times. So the 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 the, the mix, let's say, of of um, concerns is slightly changing, and therefore this uh, uh, the choices done in in uh, in this project and then in the design of vehicles needs to go into this direction, which is the global sustainability, and just not one aspect of it. Thank you, and I'm eager to see the, the development of all the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Maurizio, for that great introduction. I'm sure that uh, you will get uh, all of your questions answered by the end of this uh, webinar. We certainly have all the, the experts also working on aluminium and composites uh, who have been looking very much, as you say, into that LCA approach as well to their different designs. So I would like to uh, make a start to the webinar proper. Um, we have a packed agenda today, so uh, we will not spend too much time and more in the introduction. Um, today we have five projects, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, for all part of the NLA TV's uh, cluster. We have the ALMA project, which we'll be presenting first, followed by Fatigue for Light, uh, Flamingo, Revolution and Levis. Um, to start off with, I would like to introduce you to uh, the ALMA project, who will be presented by Ms. Vanessa Ventosinos uh, from SeaTag, uh, who will also be joined by Pascal Lorenzini from AlsloMita to talk about materials, and Tom Lichthart, who will then also highlight on how we've done uh, LCA uh, for to make sure that all of our designs are actually improving sustainability. So. Without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Ms. Vanessa Ventosinos. Thank you, Jose. I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if it works properly. OK, can you see my screen? Yes. Great. So thank you very much for this opportunity to, to present ARMA project. Uh, the main goal of ALMA, in fact, is rethinking the, the electric vehicle structure in terms of sustainability. So to do so, we have adopted uh, like two strategies. The first of, uh, of, uh, of all is light weighting. Uh, it's uh, certainly related with the energy consumption of the whole vehicle, uh, but we have approached this light weighting uh, from a eco design perspective. So we have introduced to the design not only this uh, light weighting potential, but also all the life cycle assessment, as uh, previously mentioned in the introduction, in fact. Uh, and the uh, second strategy that we have following is to promote uh, the, the reuse and recycling at the end of life by promoting the um, uh, the sorting of all the parts 
uh, uh, using uh, the bondable uh, adhesives and the bondable uh, unions that promote this sorting at the end of life and uh, the monitoring of, of the state of each part at the end of life. So in, in the consortium, uh, well, CTAG is the coordinator, but we have also a TNO who developed uh, the LCA and LCC tool, BEFSIM, that uh, is going to be explained later, uh, Frankhofer for modeling, for, for validation, uh, ArcelorMittal and BATS for uh, new materials and innovative materials. Uh, Pascal from Arcelor is going to, to explain a bit about that. So we have choose as advanced materials uh, steels, and uh, SMC based on uh, glass fiber reinforcement, uh, not only because of their uh, their performances, but also uh, because the, the the cost effectiveness of such solutions, uh, because uh, it, it's easiest to to bring this innovation into the market, uh, into the mass market, if you are considering also the costs. So. <clears throat> Today, in my presentation, I'm going to, to be focused on the design, the eco-design approach that we have followed. So our motto was to choose the best material in the best location <clears throat> and to take profit of these new materials in terms of uh, geometries and, and, um, and um, functionalities, uh, changing the, the whole design of the structure. Okay. So in most of, in, in, in a lot of applications and a lot of systems and subsystems, uh, steel was the only option because of the, the very high uh, and demanding uh, crash performances in, in, in different systems. But in, in other ones, there was a doubt about which option uh, can be the, the most suitable in terms of uh, what, what to choose, SMC composites or steels. And this system were uh, the dash panel, the refrog panel, the battery lead, and the retray. So to choose the best option, we have follow a, a, an assessment, a, an eco-design assessment that uh, weights different parameters. <clears throat> the first parameter was to uh, assess the weight saving potential yeah, of using each material for, uh, for each of these uh, subsystems. Uh, the other parameter was the, the circularity. Uh, so if uh, the components can be uh, recyclable or not, or easily uh, disassembled at the end of life or not. Uh, so we have also weighted this parameter. Uh, we have included also as a, a key factor the number of references saved. Uh, because we have changed the design. So in, in using by these uh, very advanced materials, uh, we were able to um, implement different functions in the same part, which is not only uh, suitable for sustainability point of view, but also for costs. And as I mentioned, our, um, our goal is to uh, bring all this innovation into the, 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 the mass market. So it's a, a, a key factor. <clears throat> and Talking about that, another key factor to, to bring the innovations into, into the market is uh, the compatibility with the current assembly lines in the OEMs. So that these new um, concepts, these new materials um, cannot change radically uh, the, uh, the assembly line that we have today in order to, to be sure that uh, these innovations can be adopted as soon as possible. Uh, so this was an assessment in, in a sense a bit qualitative, but we have also combined this assessment with LCA assessment, uh, which was a more uh, a quantitative. And to do so, we have used a, a tool that was specified uh, specifically developed for uh, Alma project. Uh, our colleague from TNO, Tom, is going to explain it a, a bit. So we have combined both approach in order to choose the best material for each of these subsystems. And we have come to this conclusion that uh, the structural SMC uh, was uh, the best option for the battery cover and the dash panel. And uh, we choose uh, different grades of advanced steels for, for other parts uh, that allow us to, uh, to, to rethink, uh, for example, the H frame and the dock panels uh, to have a lighter and more performant uh, structures. After this redesigning, of course, we we follow an approach to validate that this uh, new concept uh, works in, in, in terms of crash. 
to do so, we, we have uh, followed uh, a Kai crash validation, so it's a simulation with uh, five different scenarios of crash, and we reach uh, a fully validated uh, design, which uh, reach a 23% of uh, light weighting compared to the baseline. We, we are quite happy with this result because our initial goal was 20%, so we have uh, reached uh, our um, our goal, in, in fact. So this is just our first introduction in ALMA uh, in terms of eco design. And uh, now I think that uh, our colleague Pascal from Arcelo is going to explain a bit about uh, the advanced steels and materials. Pascal, I don't know. Yeah, if... OK. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Vanessa, for uh, uh, giving me the floor. So I'm, I'm going to, to share uh, my presentation. Um, so just confirm me you you see it well. It looks good. OK. OK, so ju just uh, so some words about uh, our company at SolarMetal. Uh, we are uh, the leading steel supplier for uh, automotive uh, as we provide uh, around 70% of the global uh, worldwide automotive mar market with the widest uh, product portfolio. And we rely on a global network of uh, R&D labs, uh, both uh, in several European countries, North America, Brazil, and so on. And uh, in our uh, strategy, uh, we are uh, uh, strongly involved in relationships with uh, car makers uh, on co-design activities. So what about our involvement uh, in ALMA project? Uh, uh, we support uh, uh, the car maker Ford and CTAG uh, in the implementation of new steels uh, in the car design. So uh, up to the, um, the production of uh, demonstrators of the solutions. And uh, uh, Vanessa told some words uh, on uh, quite, uh, um, let's say, already well-known solutions, uh, steel solutions for uh, those who are involved uh, in uh, car uh, light weftings, such as the, the, the door rings made of uh, new steel weights uh, or uh, the H-frame uh, made of uh, um, uh, press-hardened steels. And uh, specifically in the in the field of Alma project, we developed uh, new uh, steels with adverse uh, properties to uh, uh, to to um, uh, optimize the life wafting, uh, which was uh, shown uh, by Vanessa uh, previously. So uh, I'm going to 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 highlight uh, uh, now uh, these uh, uh, kind of uh, steels, uh, which are. Uh, uh, sorted in three categories, depending on the kind of parts on which they can bring uh, lightning. Firstly, a very high string uh, uh, steel grade uh, called the uh, 40 form uh, S1270. Uh, so 1270, why? Because uh, it's the minimum uh, uh, value of its uh, uh, tensile strength. And so uh, it's dedicated to the lightening of structural parts. So, uh, shortly speaking, it's a medium manganese uh, uh, trip uh, steel uh, with a quench and partition uh, uh, microstructure. And um, uh, regarding its in use properties, uh, we validated its formability, which is uh, uh, close to that of uh, dual phase 780, uh, uh, though the mechanical properties are far more high. And uh, of course, uh, it uh, uh, leads to uh, optimal crash performance. This is the main goal for structural parts, together with um, um, uh, uh, an ability to be spot welded uh, following uh, um, uh, conventional process. Huh? So that's one uh, I, I uh, want to, to figure out uh, by saying without any post welding head treatment, which would uh, uh, make the process uh, longer. And so uh, uh, it's not uh, what we, we want to, to do, of course. 
Uh, it uh, exhibits uh, a, a good uh, um, uh, resistance to, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, what, what is called uh, LE maze. So uh, um, uh, uh, this is this is a, a very important uh, problem. But uh, uh, on some grades, uh, uh, OEMs are facing. And it has a good resistance to delayed fracture also due to its low uh, hydrogen and brittle limit. So uh, here, just as a matter of illustration, you see uh, what are the forcing applications. Uh, so in, in the frame of ALMA project, uh, uh, we obtained uh, um, a wave reduction on this uh, uh, kind of parts uh, around 30%. Uh, percent. And these parts are mainly uh, reinforcements, uh, uh, crash boxes, uh, roof cross members, as you can uh, see on this uh, uh, picture. So let's now come to a second kind of uh, steel, which is a, a laminate. Uh, so uh, with a, a core layer of uh, thermoplastic uh, polyamide. And uh, this is sandwiches between two very thin uh, uh, steel sheets, uh, uh, which are uh, uh, interstitial free uh, steels for uh, uh, um, uh, uh, for uh, uh, drawability. It, uh, so um, the. The fact is that due to this uh, uh, specific uh, structure, we we can uh, reach uh, a very interesting uh, wave saving uh, around 40% uh, percent at uh, ISO uh, stiffness, bending stiffness, uh, and uh, with a good formability of the laminate. Uh, these uh, uh, thermoplastics uh, are compatible with the ECOT process and are also self adherent to the, the steel. So, uh, this is very interesting uh, in terms of uh, processability. So, contrary to the uh, 1270 grade, uh, the objective is to uh, target uh, non visible panels but without structural functions this time. So, like uh, uh, floor panels, uh, hood inner or trunk inner. Uh, you have, for instance, uh, an illustration of uh, uh, how um, a hood inner can be uh, formed without uh, any crack uh, using this uh, steel laminate. And uh, um, uh, in the frame of uh, uh, ALMA project, uh, uh, we developed a uh, uh, press technology uh, aiming at de delivering large uh, samples in view of uh, demonstrators. Uh, and so uh, the third example of steel, uh, which was a uh, uh, to convert in the frame of uh, ALMA project is a low density steel. Uh, um, the objective of, sh of which is to lighten the outer panel this time. So you see that the, um, the, the goals uh, of uh, each of our steel grades are complementary. And uh, what's the technical value of this solution? Uh, but, um, thanks to the addition of uh, uh, around 6% of aluminium in the metallurgy. Uh, re we reach a density reduction uh, to 7.2 instead of uh, 7.8. And uh, this kind of uh, steel has an excellent uh, dense resistance, which is a key property for outer panel with the same uh, yield strength as uh, dual fast 600. And uh, this kind of uh, concept uh, uh, enables to um, um, adapt uh, uh, the, the range of uh, ductility achievable through the adaptation of the ratio of ferrite versus austenite in the microstructure, because uh, this is a duplex microstructure, so that's why it, it's called a duplex uh, uh, concept. And uh, main results of uh, our involvement in the project is on the first hand, the, the adjustment of the target to the uh, spec of the outer panels in terms of uh, uh, uniform elongation to be rich. Uh, the uh, adaptation of the hot deep cutability process uh, to the high aluminium and manganese contents of this kind of seed. 
and uh, so the, the verification of a uh, formability uh, which is compatible with the specification of uh, today finest uh, outer panels made in the best of class uh, uh, steel grade for this kind of uh, uses which is uh, dual phase uh, 500 and again as previously on the steel laminate slide you can see the the kind of uh, um, panels which are uh, targeted so doors uh, and hood outers trunk outers and the saving potential uh, uh, which was calculated in the frame uh, of uh, alma project so uh, that's all for my uh, presentation thanks thanks uh, for uh, attending to to it Thank you, uh, Pascal. Um, now we have Tom uh, Lichthart from TNO. Yeah. Let's talk about LCA. I'll take over and try to keep it short. Um, let's see. And now I have to go to the. Um, sorry, lost the mouse. Yeah, I think you're able to see it now. Yes. Yeah. So the BevSim tool. Uh, made by a, a team of uh, of, of colleagues, uh, give a very short presentation on that. Um, so it's a um, um, an LCC LCA tool designed for non LCA experts, and with the ability to uh, compare design uh, alternatives. And it, as you see, it has been applied in in BevSim, and it gives well fast LCA results um then it's yeah well of course with a lca part an lcc but also a circularity uh, indicator in it uh and including the full life cycle from the uh yeah materials processes use phase, also the end of life, and you can apply different uh, scenarios for the, especially for the end of life, but also for the electric vehicle, select different uh, electricity scenarios. Um, you can edit a, a full car in BevSim, but also do it on the level of subsystems or even parts. Uh, and that with that you have a, well a large freedom to make your own comparisons. You select a, a, a user design and can compare that up to two different uh, references. Um, and so immediately see what your design choices have any uh, have an effect. We uh, well, as said, full life cycle, so material, uh, the processes, assembly processes, and very important, of course, the use phase. In green, you see the uh, internal combustion engine, and in blue, the, the battery electric vehicle. And it's clear that, especially the battery, you have a larger impact of the, of the battery, of the materials, uh, but it is yeah paid out in the in the use phase. Um, there you see that the uh, internal combustion engine, a petrol car in this instance, has a much higher impact, and overall that gives the battery electric vehicle a better performance. You can also do the uh, yeah here you see the the global warming potential, but also other impact categories from recipe can be shown and the lifestyle costing results can be shown. I will not show it. And we have the material circularity indicator. Um, so that's an, an indication on how your circularity of your design is working. Um, the closing remarks. Yeah, it's it's on the full life cycle that you can do the studies. And because it's much simpler, but still offers a full LCA, you have significant savings in time and efforts. And still you can put LCA in directly into your design process. 
the BEFSIM tool also has the, the advantage that it's consistent um, and you can have access if you show send me an email. There is a, 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 a small fee based on it, but please uh, yeah, contact me if you want to have a, a demonstration or access. So I, I hope I gained some time with this uh, presentation. And uh, as said, uh, yeah, thanks for your attention and feel free to uh, contact me to more about to know more about the BEFSIM tool. OK. Mute. I'm on, sorry, I was on mute. Um, thank you very much, Tom, for that presentation. Um, unfortunately, we had a little bit of a technical glitch and we couldn't see your presentation slides, but we will share the presentation slides uh, with everybody along with all of the presentations from today. And of course, the recorded video so that you can always look at that later and make sure that you didn't miss any part of that. So um, moving on, um, it is now my pleasure to introduce to you the next part of our webinar, which is from uh, Fatigue for Light, the next contributor, will be uh, Maria Violeta Parra from uh, Eurecat. And uh, she will be talking to you, of course, about circular economy, eco design, and life cycle assessment approaches to enhance sustainability of mobility solutions. So, um, Violeta, yes. the floor is yours. Thank you, Jose. Yeah, well, I was planning more on introducing to you to the eco design methodology that we developed within, well, within Eurecat, and we've been applying to this project and other projects that we're working on as well. So, but first of all, we need a little bit of introduction to this um, and why we're doing what we're doing. So in Fatigue for Light, we have some goals. We are aiming for a 24% reduction on weight. Um, we're also aiming at uh, weight savings from structural vehicle weight as well. We are developing material solutions with high fatigue performance, such as the ones that you can see on the screen, probably. Uh, we are developing new computer modeling uh, techniques um, for more accuracy in fatigue prediction. And finally, and most importantly for me, the affordability of these techniques and, and the developed uh, materials, which is also including the part of sustainability, applying life cycle assessment, life cycle costing, and of course, eco design. But how do we do this and why do we do this? Well, we all know uh, how are things right now and how we've been accelerating in population growth and also global warming potential and other um, climate effects. So that's why we're doing this. And the reason this is happening is because of this formula that someone else didn't, we didn't do this. It was uh, um, Mr. Barry Commoner along with Paul Endlich, Endlich and Joel Holdren, who developed this formula that um, where they found out that all the environmental impact is created by the population, the consumption of this population and the technology that we're using. So we can see where we can improve here. We cannot reduce the population. We may reduce consumption, but we can basically and for most um, make our technology better. And how do we do this technology better? By making it greener, by making it more sustainable, more um, ecological, if you want to call it this way. We want to make this technology or all our processes, all our products more eco-designed. So we have eco-design as a, as a concept, as a methodology, and the ISO 14062 defined this eco-design as an activity of design that integrates also environmental impacts impacts into this into design and development. Uh, the main goal is to anticipate and to minimize this negative environmental impacts during the lifetime of any product process or system um, by this by designing at the beginning of the development of anything that we do. 
But how do we include this um, or how do we integrate this environmental impacts into design? We would have to measure it somehow. So that's how we uh, coupled uh, design with life cycle assessment to make it a real eco design, right? Uh, we know that life cycle assessment is a systematic analysis that includes all the life cycle stages of a product material or system. And this methodology includes several steps. You can see and see them on the screen, like defining what we're going to study, the goal and scope, the, the unit that we're going to use to measure all the the um, flows, the inputs and outputs of the system. Then with this information, we create an inventory and then we evaluate this inventory in terms of the impact that they're creating in the environment and we analyze this result. Having all this information, then how do we do this? Well, uh, we developed a, um, a methodology that includes both um, uh, eco design and LCA methodology within. And uh, we started by saying, well, what's the easiest way to plan this um, eco design um, in a very structured and easy way that can be applied to any kind of product or any kind of study that we want to go through? So we went to the plan, do, study, act that we all know. We went to the basics. So we have four basic steps. First, we identify where we have to focus because sometimes we focus on the very small things um, that don't have a really big impact or sometimes just very small things have the greatest impact. But how to know this? And we do a preliminary LCA on whatever we're going to study and we find the hotspots in the life cycle stages. We identify where we have to focus. Then there's a second step where we establish the most properly mm, designed particularity or eco-design strategies based on what we have to focus on, on this hotspot that we found on step one. Then on step three, we align this um, different strategies that we may come up like, uh, like brainstorming from our perspective from LCA practitioners. And then uh, we align this to the technological procedures so we make sure that this um, strategies can actually be applied. And then on step four, we select with uh, the help of uh, the consortium in our case, Empathic for Light, we define specific actions that we can go through that can be applied technically, um, economically, and that they're be better for the environment. So this is more or less how we did it for Fatigue for Life. It's only one slide um, for each of the steps, but it's actually a lot of work um, behind this. For step one, we define the hotspots and main issues for the different life cycle stages. In this case, I'm only presenting the raw material extraction, manufacturing and assembly. That is the first stage that we consider for Fatigue for Light. And we found that that we could improve this, um, well, that the impact that this stage has in the within the life cycle um, of uh, fatigue for light was to more or less in between 35 to 50 percent of the impact. So it's a really big issue, and we should focus on this stage. And then we found a few hotspots I like to focus more in deeply, um, like the the electric vehicle production stage could be higher, so we can we can focus on materials and the processing of these materials. Also, the use of critical raw materials could be um, a problem. Um, well, in, in, in any case, we can, see, we can see them and read them on the screen. This is what we found for only this space. As I was saying, it's very simple. I wanted to keep it short for you. But you can also contact me for more details and further time. Then for step two, we define some, a set of strategies and the setup of the strategies. So um, this is what we found. We found nine different strategies that we could apply. We made a description. We found like how much impact would have this each strategy on each, each of the different life cycle stages. So we could present this and explain it to our, the consortium. And after that, we readapt to feasibility with the help of the consortium. 
Uh, we had gathered people from different uh, departments of the companies, design, management, um, more technical and more management as well, because we wanted to make sure that these strategies were feasible uh, in any possible way, technical, economic, and that were better for the environment. So uh, some of these strategies were actually at the end not considered for the study uh, after seeing that it was not viable or not feasible um, from an economic or from a technical perspective. After that, having the strategies very well defined and agreed by the consortium, then we went for the definition of specific actions to take um, to, to take place within the project. Um, so I'm not listing the, the specific actions here because it was very long and it wasn't visual for the presentation. But we used uh, analytical hierarchy process to judge not only the actions, but also the strategies. We did some um, scoring for this uh, actions and strategies, and we'll find a final score for each of the actions. In this way, we can focus on the highest score that from the point of view of the construction, that is probably, um, it has a bias, of course, but is um, the more objective um, scoring that we could find so far. And we can focus on the most beneficial actions from the perspective of the whole consortium. So this is what we've been doing in Fatigue for Light and also in other projects we've been applying. And we found that uh, this is really boosting teamwork uh, with all the consortium with different um, profiles. Um, and this really improves communication and the, also boost the, the confidence of uh, the people that's working in the decision process. Um, enhances the implementation of different technologies and procedures when it covers the whole life cycle of the product. It addresses directly environmental perspective and not only directly but continuously all through the project. And we can find um, tangible environmental impact reduction um, after applying all this. I wasn't going to present any results, so that's why I have the conclusions. And then I added just a little slide with preliminary results that I wouldn't like you to take as the, the final ones because they're very preliminary. So um, we have this result for, for a demonstrator for the crossbeam member. We have two different materials and we can see the effect of the weight reduction uh, in the use stage of, in this case, is a battery electric vehicle, but we did the study for different kinds of vehicles, electric, hybrid, and battery. Um, and I think that's it. So we can see that reducing the weight in a 30%, in this case, we can get 23% lower environmental impact for this demonstrator. And that would be it. I hope I didn't do much time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Violeta, uh, for that great presentation. Um, we will now move on to our next presentation, um, which is from uh, Flamingo. So I would like to uh, welcome Mr. Toze Petkov from the Österreichisches Gisserei Institut. Which yeah, that's I have true. to admit <laughs> was a difficult <laughs> thing to pronounce. So I hope you can do a better job of that. <laughs> but it was great. Uh, thank you for inviting and uh, good morning. Um, and thank you for joining uh, this event and my presentation. Mm. I will share my screen. So, yeah, hopefully everybody can see my presentation. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I will talk about the Flamingo project itself in the next uh, few slides and uh, then move on uh, to the topic of health and safety uh, for handling of nanoparticles and having also a look on the impact of the, of the project. Um, in particular, Flamingo targets the weight reduction of um, vehicle by improving properties of existing aluminium. This means uh, less material for same or better mechanical properties and the components can uh, compete with uh, steel. The aim is to improve the 
properties by introducing nanoparticles into a metal matrix. And in this project, we have um, a steering knuckle from an electric vehicle, which is uh, made of steel by and by using nanoparticles reinforced aluminium and topology optimization, we were able to replace the part with a casted aluminium component with less weight and comparable properties. Uh, the project started uh, in February 2021 and we are a little bit above the half of the project of the duration and uh, the consortium is, uh, consists of 11 partners from eight countries. Uh, it's a four year project and divided into 10 work packages. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, here you can see the electric vehicle that is produced by Alke in Italy in uh, Padua. And uh, from a casting perspective, uh, we are focused on the steering knuckle, but also in the project, uh, we are optimizing the, the rear frame here. And uh, we, we see uh, what is possible uh, by optimizing um, the, the material and uh, reinforcing the aluminium. We can save about, let's say, 68% uh, at the steering knuckle and uh, about 35% at the rear frame. Um, and these results can be also extrapolated for the for the whole ve uh, vehicle uh, after afterwards. So an overview about Flamingo. Mm. Uh, these are some of our technology uh, technology uh, involved in the project. Uh, it all starts with uh, with the with the material with the nanoparticle, and um, it's. Um, uh, it's not easy to to work and handle nanoparticles, so it is necessary to to have a, a safe material, and therefore there is the metal alloying with solid state milling. This is made um, uh, by a project partner, MBN. They have a, a high energy milling where they can produce every composition we want and we tested also different uh, nanoparticles uh, in com combination with um, with aluminium and aluminium alloys different uh, another technologies we used in the project where is the is the casting part we we cast it in uh, green sand casting and also in low pressure die casting did topology optimization uh, from a very simple uh, steel part uh, to a uh, more um, more com complex uh, aluminium part uh, with less weight. Uh, also, one part is extrusion. extrusion. Uh, also, the uh, weatherability assessment also and uh, non-destructive testing and also destructive testing of the components and. Uh, at the last point, the recycling for circularity uh, purposes. Uh, and all these uh, activities were supported uh, by IP management training, LCA and LCCA, uh, standardization, regulation, monitoring, dissemination, and communication. Mm -mm. So, what are the objectives of Flamingo? As mentioned before, solid state mechanical alloying, uh, the production of uh, additives uh, in, um, in in this uh, high energy power mill, we call it master batches with different compositions. Um, also, um, next for the casting of aluminium nano composites components by inoculating the additives uh, or the master batch in an aluminium melt and uh, for homogeneous distribution uh, of the of the nanoparticles uh, a combination of ultrasonic uh, treatment uh, was conducted and, uh, and 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 steering as well uh, and different steering methods let's say 
uh, the production of the components by low pressure die casting and green sand die cast, uh, green sand casting to demonstrate broader feasibility facil and uh, ap applicability of the uh, aluminium uh, um, material. Also, the extrusion of the ca of cast billets for making profiles for the body frame. The weldability assessment using a range of welding technologies, the topology optimization and process simulation, um, uh, and enabling the reduction of material per part without uh, losing mechanical properties, and the usage of these components uh, for uh, substitution of steel and aluminium parts in electric vehicles. Validation of uh, recycling supported also by the use of secondary aluminium. So here is, is the, is the uh, path, uh, a diagram where we start with a primary and a secondary aluminium, uh, go to the melting process, the foundry where we add the master batch and the nanoparticles, then to the production plant, the extrusion, the die casting in combination with uh, with topology optimization, and after that we 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 test uh, we test the components uh, 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 in the vehicle and uh, do have a look on the rec recycling and uh, uh, safety issues and also on the LCA, and then. Uh, close the circularity and uh, uh, guarantee the environmental sustainability. And the nanoparticles uh, will follow all these steps starting from the melting process uh, uh, till the final product and the recycling, where we can use the nanoparticles in the secondary aluminum as well then. So uh, here we see how the component changed from steel to aluminium by topology optimization and nanoparticle reinforced aluminium. Uh, uh, we have a total different shape and ge geometry. Uh, this is not the final product yet. Uh, we did also some uh, further improvements of that to make it uh, more cast stable and easier to produce the sand models and also uh, for later on for the low pressure die casting for the for the steel molds. Um, the following five phases are in, included during the project. In the first phase, the identification of the nanoparticles and alloy combinations were carried out uh, to ensure best results. Then the development of dispersion and casting technologies, ultrasonic and different steering methods we are used to ensure a homogeneous distribution. Uh, in, the, in the third phase, um, the topology optimization was performed uh, by, uh, with properties of, uh, of nanoparticle reinforced aluminium by uh, finite element methods. And uh, in the fourth phase, the characterization by non-destructive testing and destructive testing and the last part, recycling, to ensure circularity and environmental su sustainability. So uh, I would like to take the opportunity to briefly introduce the Eugides Österreich Design Institute, or in English, the say Austrian Foundry Research Institute, and uh, how we we implementing the knowledge gained in the project. Uh, uh, we, uh, we make um, about 60% of our turnover in the industry, especially in the automotive sector, and about uh, 35 uh, through research projects. Currently, we are involved in 20 projects, both national and European ones. Uh, here we can see also our research uh, um, uh, and development uh, areas. One of them is the technology transfer. All foundries in Austria are members of our institute and we act as a training center for their employees. Uh, and in, in, in the future, uh, knowledge about nanoparticles and the safe handling of them will be implemented in the training of, of uh, these employees. So 
let's jump to the topic of health and safety and uh, the safe handling uh, with nanomaterials. Uh, the research and testing activities in Flamingo are not expected to cause direct harm to the environment. All the activities are conducted in controlled environments uh, in which the relevant guidelines and legislations are applied. Uh, but to ensure this, the following points must be taken into account. Uh, the working area must uh, be isolated, also a fume cabinet must fit it with filters. Uh, the workers have all uh, full uh, face masks and uh, also the additional training for handling with nanoparticles is, uh, is uh, important for, for all workers in the foundry. So, a method to prevent working with pure nanoparticles is to uh, disperse nanoparticles through solid state processing methods as mechanical alloying that allows production of homogeneous materials use a powder metallurgy approach. So MBN has the possibility to, to do this through high energy milling, producing master batches that we use further in the foundry with different compositions and amounts of nanoparticles. Here is a, you see we, we tried aluminium with 30% of nanosilicon carbides as uh, nanoparticles and also some combinations with uh, zinc and copper and also uh, uh, nanoparticles of uh, titanium dioxide. <clears throat> The good thing is about uh, after this production, you have a, a powder in a uh, in a in the scale of about 100 to 200 uh, micrometers, which is uh, which is uh, uh, easy to work with. So, what are the the impact of flamingo? The short term impact and the medium term impact. Um, so in, in short term, we can say uh, you, you can gain more off-road capabilities because of the of the better components, the lighter weight and uh, the higher higher performing. Uh, um, you can uh, enable more functions in utility vehicles, um, also increase the working area of the fleet and uh, enable more flexibility in the configuration of the vehicle. Uh, on a medium term uh, impact, uh, yeah, we can say that uh, establish gu guidelines for for saving environment using materials with nanoparticles, also to establish guidelines for recycling in uh, compliance with current aluminium recycling methods uh, to provide the automotive industry with wider portfolio of a sustainable material and uh, also to support standard and regulation to include aluminium uh, metal matrix nanocomposite and uh, manufacturing guidelines for better repeat repeatability for casting and welding in particular. Um, so I'm almost finished with my presentation and I uh, want to say there will not be a single solution for a lightweight electro vehicle. Uh, we need to put together results uh, in a portfolio and pushing the same direction and sharing uh, baselines and, uh, and pra practices. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Tosa, for that presentation. That was very interesting. I Thank see you, that there's also a lively chat also on questions. And um, please keep it up. And if you have any questions for Tosa, also please make sure that you put them in there. Um, my next presentation or our next presentation will be from Revolution. We have Ms. Andrea Martos from Edenet who will be talking specifically about building skills for sustainable lightweight materials and digital techniques development in the automotive industry. So, yeah. Andrea, can you please Thank you, Jose. take the floor? OK, I don't know if you can see my screen. I'm full screen now. No. Everything is you're OK? Full. No, you're not sharing anything. I'm not sharing? No. This works. A few minutes ago, 
I don't know what happened. Uh, okay. Again. Now, can you see my now. screen? Yes, now we see okay. the screen. And now in full screen? Now you're in full screen, perfect. Okay, so thank you so much, Jose. Um, I, I will present as uh, um, my colleagues explain uh, the Revolution project, mainly focusing on the di digitalization techniques development uh, across the automotive industry. Uh, I'm Andrea Martos. Uh, I'm from Eidener, uh, the enterprise in charge of these activities in the Revolution project, and now I'm acting as part of the communication and dissemination team. So I hope to uh, defend this uh, part correctly for all of you. Well, as a general concept, Revolution proposed uh, the lightweight uh, 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 light weighting of the material in the part in the car components in order to try to improve the autonomy of uh, of uh, um, uh, these electric vehicles. But concretely, in the digitalization uh, revolution, proposed the, a, a disruptive innovation in 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 the injection molding, applying machine learning and artificial intelligence in order to optimize how the uh, material, in this case, recycled material, uh, entered to the system and 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 is formed in the in the molded in the in the process of the phone injection molding, in order to improve. Uh, the target of this piece and, and, and deliver high quality parts. Uh, we in Revolution uh, are 14 partners from 10 countries, uh, accounting more than 5 uh, million euros budget, with uh, a timing of three years of implementation framed in the Hay 2020 uh, 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 framework. And this is an innovation action, and we account four case studies to replicate and demonstrate the, the process in different parts of the of the of the vehicle that I explained uh, a few minutes uh, in, 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 in some minutes. So we have uh, partners really um, big in the uh, in the automotive industry as far plus and TOFAS and, uh, and, and CRF, part of the Stellantis group uh, in, in Europe. And we have research and technology organization as BTT, Norner, uh, Eidener, and, and Fraunhofer, and enterprises uh, dedicated uh, to the material development, Astrin Seo, uh, IME, Catlan, and Lion del Vassal. So the overview of the project, as I said, this is a, we follow or, or our intention is we, we will finalize uh, the digitalization and control system of the automotive injection molding process step and to construct and develop one platform uh, trying to improve the lightweight uh, the performance of the piece and the end of life advantages at uh, this disadvantaging uh, step. So, this machine, machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, will optimize the recycled materials because the idea is to try to improve the the target or the or, or, or the quantity of recycled material we can use to be used uh, in the in the automotive uh, parts and the injection molding process, trying to improve the efficiency of the of, of this step of manufacturing uh, a chain. This A platform uh, will use the data from, from uh, the area, three areas of production process to predict uh, the quality when, when they will be used uh, in, the, in the part. And all of all of this uh, concept will be used uh, for future electric vehicles because, as you probably know, one of the main uh, problems of the electric vehicles is the autonomy. And if we improve the lightweight and the cost uh, by reducing the parts that are discarded uh, uh, frequently, we can improve the the competitiveness of uh, of these uh, electric vehicles. 
Regarding the, the, the digitalization, we have two main goals uh, uh, with this uh, simulation and improvement. Uh, one of them is to reduce the weight of the components between the 10 and, and, and 40 percent compared to the current alternatives and to demonstrate that at least 18 percent of the components of the selected use case can be recovered uh, for recycling. The implementation of the project is based on four main pillars. One is the optimization of advanced, advanced light materials. This means uh, experimental uh, um, laboratory um, test uh, in order to try to find materials that are um, more weight, lightweight than the conventional ones. The second pillar of the implementation is the development of the, of the advanced process control. This process control will be uh, mainly focused on the part of the foam injection molding. So if we uh, taking into account the previous pillar, uh, the lightweight, so our idea is not only to reduce the, 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 the weight of those pieces, but also to try to improve the target of how this piece can be recycled to the system again, and this uh, can reduce the cost, the overall cost of the piece. Uh, the third pillar is the modeling and design. So we carefully uh, model and design uh, each piece and simulate how this will be, uh, well, how will be the, the behavior of those parts uh, in the cart and uh, in the recycling steps. And the final, but not uh, uh, the last, but not the least uh, uh, part of the implementation is the demonstration of and validation of those piece in, in, in real case study that I explain uh, now. All this implementation, technical implementation will be supported uh, uh, with the assessment in an environmental, social and, te and techno-economic uh, point of view. Uh, we constructed uh, from the beginning of the project an exploitation plan uh, to perform and, and to try to exploit the results of the project in the best way and with the communication and dissemination activities that will open us, uh, hopefully, the opportunities, new opportunities to, to follow the, the, the work uh, of revolution because we are on the last year of implementation. So, Hopefully, we will have uh, uh, some opportunities to to try to to uh, to continue with the research in this uh, um, in this way. The use cases. First one is the basic panel. This basic panel is the is in the boot of the car. It's a a, a cover piece uh, made frequently uh, from uh, with a steel a, a steel sheets uh, and welded to a, a metallic frame so our idea is that revolution will buy uh, build uh, uh, this component using one polymer cell reinforced polyolefin uh, saving the 55 percent of the of the overall weight this uh, case study is uh, being demonstrated in the in this in CRF the, that is part of the Stellantis group and uh, with uh, very success successful uh, results. The pillar, B, B pillar cover is this part from uh, with uh, between the, the two doors of the of the of the car. Uh, this is the in, in this case study particularly uh, the improvement the improvement is not only on on the on the material side because uh, we will use a post industrially recycled PMMA uh, uh, to develop this piece is also in the part of the of the of the system uh, on how we inject the material in the injection molding because now it's manufactured in 2k dual part is is a two step a two step process to to have the final piece and now we are we are testing and, and 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 demonstrating that this could be passed to a mono material injection molded component only in one step saving not only a cost 
uh, but also time in the production of the of this uh, uh, component for for the for the automobile. The cars uh, crash box uh, is uh, a part that uh, is. Um, this this part that when 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 you have a, a shock uh, should be reemplaced because it, 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 the, 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 it's a safety component. So here uh, the the requirements and the and the and the, um, the parameters should be more exhaustive than in previous one because this is a, a safety component. Now uh, the crash boxes are produced by a steel. Uh, and 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 we propose to have one 100% polymer solution, uh, facilitating to uh, to re to to recycle the components of the of this part of the vehicle uh, um, in Tofash. That is the 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 um, the enterprise demonstrating this part of the of the vehicle. And lower rear bumper demonstrated by Tofash two. Uh, this is an, an, an uh, aesthetical part, uh, colored uh, uh, frequently. That that many times is really difficult to 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 have the appropriate color and and gloss using the recycled materials, and and also keep the mechanical and physical properties of this part. So now we demonstrated that reducing 20% uh, in the weight. Uh, using PCR and PP polypropylene, uh, we uh, keep the the the, um, the aspect and properties uh, with the same quality than than the conventional uh, pieces. And now to finalize uh, uh, some environmental assessment highlights uh, from the evaluation with. Uh, the digitalization and cold control system and without. We uh, identify that the principal or, or the main uh, source for global, uh, global warming are the raw material used. So using the approach of the control system and, and artificial intelligence, we impact directly in the four case study because we propose to replace the conventional materials for recycled one. Uh, improving our our uh, 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 the final environmental analysis, the transport of the of materials uh, uh, are relevant when the distance is uh, higher. So, improving, for example, in the case of the B pillar, uh, to have one only step and not to pass to different uh, uh, enterprises and so on, uh, we improve, uh, of course. Uh, our target and our environmental uh, view, and in the metal uh, metal piece in the in the conventional scenario, the welding is um, a really important uh, source of of impact uh, due to the electricity and and the production of fume uh, welding, and uh, by following this uh, and by applying this control system, we uh, remove uh, the steel and the metal pieces, so we improve too. Uh, the the environmental aspects and this is all from my side uh, thank you so much for for uh, attending to, to to this webinar here is my my email and the email from the coordinator if you have a uh, special interest to collaborate or 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 uh, to have joint development uh, with uh, the revolution project thank you Thank you very much, um, uh, Andrea, and um, we will now go on to the uh, next uh, project, which is um, uh, Levis, um, which will be uh, presented by uh, Clara Valero Lazaro, and Guan Gong will follow her after this. So please, if you can share your screen. Yeah, uh, thank you for the for the presentation. I'm trying to. Um, Share my screen. Let me know when you can see uh, the presentation. Um, it's fine. Perfect. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. Great. 
So yeah, I will uh, present uh, the Levis project together with my colleague uh, Guang Gong from RICE in Sweden. Uh, my name is Clara Valero and I uh, work in, at, at ITA Innova in, in Spain. Uh, so first of all, um, here it is a, a, brief, uh, a brief overview of the Levis project. Uh, it is a, a three-year project, so we will be uh, finishing uh, next January. And uh, we, uh, ITA Innova, are the project coordinators and the consortium is uh, integrated by 13 partners. Uh, we are uh, both research institute and institutes, in the institutes and also uh, industrial partners from seven different countries. Okay, so um, as for the all the projects, the main or one of the main objectives of Levis is uh, to manufacture or to create uh, lighter components for electric vehicles. Um, in this case, we have chosen four demonstrators to um, to apply our tools or our methods. Uh, those are the suspension control arm, a battery box, a module box, and the steering uh, column carrier group of uh, a cross car beam. And basically, the tools or um, methodologies that we uh, in which we focus on are uh, the design and development of new materials, lighter materials, and uh, materials with uh, advanced properties. Uh, the um, uh, design of manufacturing and assembly, uh, new assembly technologies. We support these um, these uh, parts uh, with uh, the uh, analysis of the structural integrity of and life prediction of our components. Uh, that's uh, a computational block. We are also introducing uh, structural health monitoring systems in some of our demonstrators. We are also uh, we also focus on uh, what happened with our components and materials when they are no uh, longer um, useful. So we focus on end of life approaches, and uh, uh, obviously all of these uh, parts or methodologies are uh, analyzed uh, with uh, environmental uh, or their environmental and techno-economic uh, impact is, is well analyzed with different tools. Uh, the, final, the final objective is to uh, be able to replicate what we learn in, with these four demonstrators in different uh, electric vehicle components. So in this uh, presentation, we are going uh, to focus on those uh, two uh, aspects. Uh, I will first uh, give you some uh, ideas about the uh, analysis of the structural integrity of the components, and then uh, Guan will uh, present some end-of-life uh, approaches uh, that we are uh, developing uh, at Levis. So um, the first tool that, or one of, of the tools that we uh, use to uh, to create. Uh, or to design lighter components is or are simulation methods for accurate failures or service life prediction and also uh, for uh, design optimization. So uh, the methodology that we uh, propose in, in Levis follow this uh, simulation workflow. It combines both uh, process simulation or uh, material characterization together with uh, mechanical or structural analysis. So basically, we begin with uh, some basic information about our components, such as uh, the geometry or uh, information about the material. We focus on multi-material solutions, so uh, we uh, combine uh, for example, metals and uh, composites. So in those composites, we um, well, we, we need information about the uh, volumetric fraction of fibers that we use, uh, their mechanical properties and so on. Um, we also have information about the manufacturing process. 
so we can perform these simulations and we obtain a more detailed uh, information from or, for, of our component. For example, if we are going to have micro uh, porosity, uh, how the fibers are going to be reoriented during the manufacturing process, if we uh, or if there are internal or uh, internal stresses or strains induced during the manufacturing. So um, with this information, we can uh, create a more detailed model for the uh, for the structural simulation, which at the end gives us the information that we that we want to know. Um, I will show you here uh, one example uh, from from the project, uh, more focus on the uh, on the analysis of the uh, structural uh, stability part. Uh, in this case, uh, the the uh, demonstrator that we are designing is an internal beam from a battery box. And the solution that is proposed in Levis is a multi-material beam that combines an aluminum profile and a um, composite profile, uh, both bonded by an adhesive. So, uh, well, in, in general, we have to uh, consider some aspects when we want to, uh, before we uh, begin our simulation campaign. So uh, in general, we have to, to check or we, or we need to have an accurate definition of the geometry of our component, of, of our component. also uh, considering how this component is going to, to interact with uh, other components with, uh, in the whole assembly. Uh, we need to define properly the, the material uh, based on different uh, work methods, both experimental or computational, if needed. Uh, we have also to define uh, clearly which simulations we, we need to or we want to do in order to confirm structural stability. And also we, want, we need to define uh, the failure criteria for, for this uh, material. So basically, we need to define uh, what we know what we want to know and, and how we can uh, know it. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next slides for this uh, specific uh, example. So, uh, for example, as I've said, we need a proper material definition. So in Levis, we have uh, worked both uh, in, as, um, well, ideally, we would have the mechanical characterization of our materials. Uh, based on different uh, experimental tests, but when this is not possible, we can complement uh, those experimental tests with computational methods that help us to have uh, more detailed uh, properties that cannot be uh, uh, estimated otherwise. And we can also introduce uh, effects created uh, or uh, observed in the uh, process simulations. For example, we have observed that in some cases the, um, the fibers uh, reoriented uh, or that uh, depending on the manufacturing conditions, uh, there is going to be, uh, well, uh, for example, porosity and so on. So we can uh, modify these um, these uh, conditions in order to uh, have a, a better, uh, let's say, uh, component. So, uh, for example, also in this case, we used uh, micromechanics models to estimate uh, some mechanical properties that uh, was not possible, that were not possible to to obtain uh, experimentally, um, and. Well, we, we also uh, obtain uh, or we can estimate, for example, thermal properties that are not um, uh, easily uh, obtained uh, in, in experimental tests and, and so on. Uh, then we need to define uh, which, uh, fini wait, well, I, I haven't said it before, but we basically use uh, finite element models in, in Levis. So we need to define uh, which simulations are the more suitable ones for our component. 
uh, they can be focused on both mechanical or thermal uh, loads because uh, the components that we are uh, analyzing here are sometimes uh, uh, well under uh, high uh, temperature changes. So it's also a, a very important uh, aspect that must be uh, checked. Also, we can, if we observe that we have some uh, zone that might be critical, we can create more uh, detailed models in order to check uh, specifically in that zone uh, how it, the component is going to, to behave. So uh, we define all this, uh, all this uh, simulation campaign. And then once that we have uh, the the, let's say our results. We need to uh, to post process them in order to obtain an estimation of the uh, of of uh, the the service life or the uh, stability of our component. So in this case, we have uh, defined different uh, failure criteria for each material, taking into account. Uh, the specific behavior of its ma material. For example, if we have a isotropic or anisotropic materials, we uh, failure is defined on differently. Uh, so with this uh, with this strategy, we can detect the let's say the weakest link in our multi-material components. So uh, we can focus on the on the weakest uh, part and. Uh, we can propose uh, modification of the material, geometry, and and so on, because uh, when when one of the material fails, the the whole component uh, is considered to 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 have failed also. So uh, to to summary this part, um, well we uh, we combine process and structural simulations. We also combine experimental and computational information to create accurate models. And this uh, strategy gives us the, the possibility of investigate easily different materials, geometries, uh, conditions of the manufacturing process, uh, and, and so on. Uh, so now I will uh, give the floor to my colleague Juan. One, you're on mute. Sorry, I just uh, <laughs> remembered to turn on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for the reminding and thank you very much, Clara, for the very nice presentation. Uh, I will continue. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Quango and I'm a senior researcher working at Rice Research Institute of Sweden. Uh, today, I will present some central progress in the work package in the Levis project which is dedicated to the uh, strategies and approaches for the end of life composite parts and materials that is being developed and recycled in the project. Uh, the work done in this task uh, that will uh, the, the work done in this task includes a thorough review on the state of the art recycling technologies from both for both thermoset and thermoplastic a carbon fiber composite since 1990s, which is then combined with market relevance and opportunities for recycled carbon fiber composite and related recycling processes, for instance, for the road vehicles. During the execution, a proposal of an overall end of life approach adequate for the range of materials, processes and design solutions uh, addressed in the Levis project was developed. And in all its scope, it is presented as a prospective uh, possible strategy that could be implemented in parallel to the introduction of the technologies in the market. A appropriate recycling approaches were developed based on different thermoplastic polymers used in the Levis demonstrators. Uh, the work also involves uh, validation through performing a life cycle analysis using the test result. So the first thing we have to say is uh, what is the prerequisite for the closed loop recyclable carbon fiber reinforced polymer and the relative closed loop recycling process? Uh, is that the composite waste Specifically, the composite end of life in the Levis project must be harvested with a maximum re returned value, which can only be achieved by a systemic approach for sorting, inspection, uh, characterization, and dismantling. 
Also, the development of a specific uh, procedures in all those operations that I mentioned is out of the scope of this project. It is still considered that an end of life uh, uh, strategy proposal must take all these aspects into consideration. And furthermore, to enable the whole composite industry to be well positioned in the circular economy and advance the digital ecosystems, as shown in the picture, the left side needs to be uh, promptly developed. So in this uh, digital uh, platform or the ecosystem, materials market design function, online and offline testing function, as well as the environmental impact evaluation must be implemented uh, in and also to generate and verify and demonstrate the most effective, environmentally beneficial and profit composite reuse and recycling strategies. And, for, and so until now, many sorting and non-destructive testing, inspection and dismantling techniques were or are being developed for separating multi-material composite structures. However, a critical step of evaluating the overall agent or service status of the composite part or the structures is usually missing. And here we must distinguish two concepts, the end of life of a material and the end of life of a part, application or product from each other. The end of life of a material is reached when no more value can be extracted from it. The end of life of a part application or product is attained when it can no longer serve uh, its original purpose. For instance, if a car uh, reaches its maximum uh, mileage. Both material and applications can have multiple lifetimes. For instance, an application uh, can or a product can reach its end of life and the materials contained in it still possess a potential for several more life cycles. Therefore, the evaluation uh, of the overall agent and service status of the composite end of life parts uh, uh, indeed has the most significant influence on the reuse efficiency and the quality of the new uh, composite product based on the end of life parts. So if the materials in the end of life parts are severely aged, or degraded, reaching the materials end of life, then the whole composite end of life part will not be reliable for reuse in spite of very few or uh, light defects or damaged zones are detected. And also when we are trying to dismantle and shred the end of life parts uh, prior to the new product design or development, this will also uh, limit the reuse effectiveness Therefore, in order to address this kind of challenge of understanding the overall aging and the service status of the end of life composite parts, a methodology as shown on the right side of this slide, uh, this methodology capable of combining different tools, techniques and the sources of information in a smart way uh, will be developed and to obtain a high quality and complete end of life composite part characterization with minimized uh, effort. So virtual testing and the micro mechanical models will be combined with a machine learning and a reduced order model technique, which together make up a prospective concept and the method designed for the end of life composite parts evaluation as specified in this sketch. Uh, next slide, please. So the, the overall rule uh, underpinning the end of life strategies, which is not limited only in Levis project. Uh, firstly, the parts without damage would be directly used in manufacturing of uh, new structures uh, with identical or similar requirements. And correspondingly, the integration will be verified. So the reuse, the parts will not become defects in the newly manufactured structures. And secondly, parts with minor damages, which occur mostly in the resin rich regions, would be repaired by, for instance, remelting or refilling with the recyclable matrix, re matrix resin, uh, and then used for new structures with comparable requirements. 
and correspondingly, the repaired efficiency, the repairing efficiency, and the characteristic properties of the repaired parts will be verified. And the third one is parts with catastrophic damages, which occurs mostly throughout the fiber reinforcement, and that cannot be repaired, uh, which instead will be used for recovering of fiber reinforcement resins and chemicals. Uh, and as Clara has mentioned in the Levis project, we have three categories of uh, uh, carbon fiber reinforced thermoplastic demonstrators uh, being developed. Demo one is suspension control arm. Demo two A is a battery pack which contains three sub demonstrators, the upper cover, side beam and internal profiles. Demo two B uh, and is the battery modules, module housing and demo three. Uh, the cross carbon. So in total, there will be indeed six components uh, to be studied regarding the end of life strategy. However, those components can be categorized by the thermoplastic matrix, matrix and by the design if they are need carbon fiber reinforced thermoplastic composite or they will be hybridized with the metallic part. So based on this kind of classification, we can see that there were two uh, types of thermoplastics matrix in the Levis project. One is the aliphatic polyamide, PA6 and PA66, and this, the other one is liquid thermoplastic alien resin, which uh, includes the methyl metacrylate. And some of them are neat composite, polymer composite, uh, and some others are hybridized with either aluminum parts or steel parts. So next slide, please. And so we can also briefly introduce the progress of the recycling of alien resin based carbon fiber reinforced composite. So here we use a low temperature uh, pyrolysis process in nitrogen atmosphere at 420 degrees for four hours. As you can see here, the carbon fiber fabric keeps a good structure integrity uh, after the pyrolysis, which is beneficial for the cost of manufacturing of the secondary composite. And the product out of the pyrolysis process are many recycled carbon fiber fabrics and the crude oil. And the gas amount is only around 3% of the whole. So, uh, and the GCMS spectral analysis uh, done with the crude oil it shows a stole and a strong peak of MMA, which is the reactive monomer of the alien resin. So those results indicate that most uh, materials in the carbon fiber, uh, carbon fiber reinforced thermoplastic uh, that is recycled at this uh, uh, project is, uh, how to say, is, uh, is uh, being preserved instead of decomposed into gas. And uh, after comparison with the standard uh, MMA, the purity and the content of MMA in the uh, crude oil out of the pyrolysis process can also be calculated. And we can also collect uh, the MMA from the crude oil. <clears throat> and then we also uh, use the single fiber test for a couple of hundreds of fibers and to measure the strengths and modulus of the recycled carbon fiber. Uh, and we found that 85% of the tensile strength uh, of the carbon fiber is preserved and the modulus is almost not influenced. So that is all uh, for my presentation uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guan, for that uh, presentation and also to uh, Clara uh, for the first section. Um, um, we are running a little bit over time, um, but we do hopefully still have a little bit of time for some questions and perhaps uh, some discussion. Um, I would like to introduce in any case right now, uh, Miriam Vendrel Bosch uh, from Eurocat, uh, who will be uh, moderating a quick question and answer session. I hope that most of you will be able to stay on for some of the uh, questions and answer sessions. And if not, at least we would like to say thank you for attending, um, but please do stick around. It should be uh, uh, an interesting question and answer session. So please, Miriam. Yes, 
Uh, I have seen that some of the questions on the chat have already answered, so to be as quick as possible. And um, yes, I will take a look. Yes, we have first a uh, question from Maurizio Maggiore. I don't know if it's uh, here now, but yes, for, for Alma speakers, I don't know, Vanessa or Pascal or Tom, if, if some of you can answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Mauricio um, asked if isn't keeping the assembly project a strong limit in the potential for innovation? Wouldn't adding a no limit approach also be needed to see how much potential there is in, in alternative technologies? Yeah, I think that Mauricio is referring to our consideration in the assembly line compatibility of our innovations. So I, I in my view, it depends on if you are targeting uh, short-term or long-term innovations. Uh, as you know, this project is uh, an innovation action, so we uh, we deal with uh, pretty high TRLs, something that can be applied in a re relatively short term. So in this sense, since the assembly line is something, uh, well, quite expensive to change and it's very time demanding, uh, we focused on uh, innovations that are mostly compatible with the, the existing ones in order to introduce them uh, in the short term. In, 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 uh, in yeah, um, something like two years, three years after the end of the project. So this is the main reason, but of course it's limiting. Yeah, we, we, we can do something much more disruptive if we think in the long term, but it's not in, under the scope of, of pharma project. OK, thank you, Vanessa. Now we have uh, also a question for Violeta from Iricat of Fatty for Life project. And regarding the methodology that you presented um, before, can this methodology be applied to other sectors or cases aside than mobility? Yes, of course. We, we were aiming for this general methodology that you can apply to any kind of study, but it requires a very like a consortium or a group of uh, designers that are very committed to this work, it, it, but it could be applied to any case. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Violeta. Now I'm checking on the chat. Yes, from Tose for from Flamingo Project. How do you see the potential for a large scale technological implementation and it and is it economically uh, sustainable? Mm, yes, hello. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, uh, from our point of view, we, we did uh, our, our trials and our uh, ca casting in a 40 kilogram cru uh, crucible and uh, we need some kind of ultrasonic treatment. To, to break up these clusters from the master batch and to distribute the nanoparticles uh, homoge homogeneously. I will switch on my camera. Um, uh, so this amount, it's, it, it's, it's, it, it works fine, but if you uh, imagine to do that on a large crucible of 500 kilograms, they, the unit is just too small and uh, there is uh, more research needed. Uh, but of course, if you can implement it uh, uh, in a larger scale, it would also be uh, sustainability uh, and um, good working. So, but I think uh, this could be also another project or a, uh, yeah, a further, further project for that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, I see a question from Christian Leroy to Andrea Dominguez. Uh, he asked if, if you can clarify, Andrea, at uh, the end of life advantages that uh, you will develop with the project. Yeah, I, I was an, uh, answering him uh, by the chat, but in any case, uh, the aim or of this or, or, or the improvement uh, uh, in the end of life is that those parts that uh, we are converting to polymer solution are uh, can be uh, dismantling better than the steel the steel ones and uh, improve the capability to uh, crush those uh, uh, pieces uh, and to reuse to introduce again in the in the in the loop of the of the process. 
Okay, and we have another question for you, Andrea, regarding the first results on sustainability reports, which are the main steps to reduce the emissions in the car manufacturing, ensuring the lightweight of, of the materials? Sorry, I, I didn't see this uh, the, from, from Pascal. No, no, it's not from Pascal, this one. Oh, okay, <laughs> can, can you repeat, please? Yes, regarding the first results on sustainability reports, which are mm -hmm. the main steps to reduce the emissions in the car manufacturing, ensuring the, the lightweight of, of the materials? OK, yeah, uh, uh, the main is to replace all the pieces that we can, uh, that are made from steel or metal pieces in, into polymer solutions, because the, the steel and, and metal pieces are, are High uh, are, are difficult to 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 recycle and and so on, and the second one I think that I explained at the end uh, is to try to uh, simplify the 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 process uh, for manufacturing, trying to do uh, some process that are now two, three, or four steps in single steps. And this reduces electricity and 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 improve the uh, well the environmental. Um, analysis. Okay, thank you, Andrea. I see another question from Christian Leroy to Guan Gong of, of from Levy's project. Uh, did you analyze the main challenges to implement your proposed solutions considering the current ELV uh, treatment practices? Yeah, I was planning to write on chat, but then I said maybe I can directly talk. Uh, yes, we have analyzed and to be honest, um, that's why I, I said it, it for this uh, specific project. What we did is a thorough check of the literature study and combined with the expertise and the experience from different partners who has been intens intensively working on the composite recycling and reuse due to that we have a limited budget and time scale, so we cannot actually uh, really carry out the practical work. Instead, we we combine our knowledge and know how to come up with, uh, a, let's say, a general perspective and a concept that we think that should be the future for the uh, to promote or to boost the reuse and recycling and the composite. And specifically, I have, we have some challenges. For instance, if it's a hybridized material that the polymer composite is uh, bounded to a uh, metallic parts we have uh, developed uh, by Itainova uh, the controlled uh, heating uh, for uh, dismantling in order to reduce the uh, additional uh, defects that introduced could be introduced by the dismantling process and then we also have uh, LCA and there is another challenge we have figured out how to in how to re, re uh, how to say connect the, the end of life uh, and the LCA because they have to, we have to maybe develop a new module that can include the end of life into the LCA, so LCA not stopped. Uh, so that is uh, quite, I, I, I think this is a very good question and we do have a lot of challenges. Uh, so I, I would be really happy to discuss with, the, uh, with you after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, now continuing with uh, the Levis project speakers, maybe Clara Valero, uh, we have a question. In your presentation, you, you have mentioned that you simulate manufacturing processes of components. Can you give us some examples of how this simulation uh, can help in light weighting? Yeah, well, uh, um, this, uh, this process simulation is part of the core uh, workflow uh, proposed. Uh, including simulation activities. So basically it helped us to, to know if the manufacturing conditions that we are going to, to apply or that we are going to use are the proper ones. Uh, so for example, we can uh, test different uh, ply orientations when we are manufacturing a composite uh, component. Uh, we can check uh, how the uh, resin is injected, the temperature, the pressure, so the combination of these different um, uh, variables uh, can help us to decide if we can manufacture, for example, a thinner component uh, with uh, that that fulfills the, the property that we need. So it's a uh, part of the whole uh, workflow. OK, maybe we can have time for two quick questions, two more questions. 
uh, for Violeta uh, from Fatic for Life. How much of the environmental impact ca can be reduced with eco design and LCA combo? OK, um, there is an estimation like that is in general. If you apply eco design from the beginning of the development of any kind of material or solution or I'm not talking about electric vehicles or vehicles at all, it's just in general. It's said that it's an 80 percent um, defined in the design at the beginning of the product. So if you eco design at the beginning, you have all that range of improvement if you start at the beginning and then it goes lowering along the life cycle of the product. If it's already been de developed, then you can improve some parts, but not all of them. And then for usage and all, uh, it is reducing over the time. But if you start at the beginning, it's an 80% of environmental impact from design. Okay. Thank you so much, Violeta. Mm -hmm. mm, I see that we have a last question in the chat from Francesc Perarnau to Andrea Dominguez. He asked if which kind of machine learning and platform do you use or are you developing? Yeah, the, mainly the platform that we are uh, using is, I, I, I cannot um, detail as much as all the information from the project is now confidential, but the uh, the process, uh, the the idea is to put some sensors and 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 other kind of of uh, uh, measurement uh, equipment, and with this control system and machine learning, uh, we are training this machine in order to only select the pieces that uh, are okay that uh, has the enough quality to pass to the second stage and the piece that are not okay uh, are recirculated to the process uh, um, to reuse the the the, the pieces uh, trying to mile in again and, and so on this is more or less the okay so yes just the last question that we received just now from the chat for you also andrea uh, you are probably aiming at recycling at the part or alloy specific recycling. Is that the case? Yes, is, is, this is the case. I'm so sorry, but because I I I have the feeling that I'm not explaining uh, as well as my colleagues, my technical colleagues can. But in any cases, if you uh, still have question, you can contact me because I put it my email and the email from the coordinator uh, on the chat. Yes, sure. Thank you, Andrea. Um, I think that's all. Thank you all for, for the questions and for the, the interaction in the chat. I think it was uh, really great to see all your comments during the presentation and the webinar. And Jose, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but maybe we can share with you the, the video uh, in some days and also presentations and also the contact. So if you have any other question or you want to continue with some kind of discussion, um, sure uh, from our side and from the speaker side uh, we will be happy to 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 talk with you and to continue with the discussion so thank you all and jose for closing part thank you very much uh, miriam indeed i would like to echo what you just said that we will of course be sharing the video and materials uh, from this webinar for everybody to uh, also uh, reference afterwards um we would also First, um, like to um, apologize uh, for running a little bit over time um, and thank you all for the patience for sticking with us until the end. I'm sure that um, the questions and answers were uh, particularly useful to clarify the situation for uh, the different projects and uh, your interests. Um, I would like to thank all of our presenters. We had five projects here today. Uh, all part of the Enlight EVS cluster, working towards enlightening of our uh, future EV vehicles. Uh, we thank them also for their efforts and for being here today to share with us uh, their research and their progress. Um, I would also like to thank, of course, uh, the European uh, Commission for recognizing us as an official Green Week event. Um, we are definitely uh, grateful for the opportunity to share 
what it is that we're doing with our projects and in particular, of course, on how our projects can impact industry by making sure that all of the industry is aware and has the knowledge that they can also implement into their own designs and their own processes. Because in the end, um, I think uh, Maurizio also uh, put a little bit of a, an emphasis on what it is that should be the balance um, between um, what we try to aim for as uh, innovation potential within our projects. And of, but of course, we also have to make them um, implementable and something that can be practically used in industry afterwards, which also means that we have to prepare what it is that we have, not only just for industry, but also make sure that we can transfer that knowledge effectively and efficiently uh, to the people that have to use it. So um, that is what this EU Green Week is all about. So I would encourage you to uh, look for other uh, events and uh, things that you can participate in and uh, be part of in during this week to make sure that you are also up to date on how you can play a part in this. And finally, of course, I would like to say um, thank you all of the attendees for joining us. We will, uh, as uh, previously mentioned, put everything online for your further reference afterwards. And uh, I wish you all a great week ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.